sure do. Let's go to our friend Gary Cobb here and get his take because I'll tell you what, man, that was just an absolute ass beating that the Eagles put on the Giants. And, you know, Gary, I think you and me and pretty much everyone else, I think this is a Vikings thing. You know, we got no caught. I mean, I looked at that record that Minnesota put up and the Giants and the job that they did, we all kept doing this. Boy, that's pretty good effort by them going up to Minneapolis and winning like that. Yeah. And they took care of a good team. Come to think about it now, Minnesota wasn't that good of a team. But the thing you go like this on Saturday night, right, Gary? Hey, Sills, we told you that giant team was week 14 giant team, and we showed you. That's what they did. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, they, they took care of business, you know, and they, they went out, jumped on them. But, yeah, the Giants, um, really looking at the at the Viking film, the defensive coordinator, uh, half, of the, the, uh, half of the defensive backs are playing man, the other half are playing zone. You're going like, what is going on? So – uh, Minnesota just, um, you know, they weren't that good and really kind of showed we saw that um, Daniel Jones and that crew, they still got a ways to go uh, to really do anything. So uh, they exposed them, but I got to give the Eagles credit. They went out. If that's who you're playing, you go out, you take care of them and, and you handle your business. And uh, they took care of it. And the, and the game was over at at halftime. Um, I think that uh, it's just a confidence builder. And it was good. Uh, for for Jalen to get that on his way back, you know, he gets a, a game in which he's kind of warming things up because you know that the the Niners, you know, they got their work cut out for the Niners. Uh, and I, I, I'll say this: I mean, I've been impressed with the with the Niners and everything, but they're not un, unbeatable either uh, because you know they've had their problems. Now the big thing you got to do is, you know, everybody's got to be doing their job. They got to be sharp. The communication's got to be good. You know they're going to uh, probably do some things, uh, mix some things up uh, with some blitzes or something. And, uh, you know, they like to play zone. They play zone. Their linebackers are very athletic, those guys in the middle. So you got to take care of the football because the Cowboys beat themselves. Those turnovers, which, you, you know, we, we all are talk about the turnovers, it's probably going to have a lot to do with who wins on Sunday. Whoever turns the ball over, you take care of the football, and you get back to, you know, uh, to doing that. Because I, I don't see uh, either team just, you know, blowing the other team out uh, because you got two good defenses. So it's going to be a play here or there. I mean, you know, it's going to mean taking care of the football. But I, too, but, but I tell you what, though, I love what they did. Put that ball on the ground. And once you establish that, see, once you establish these guys can't stop you from running the ball, then it opens up everything else, and that's what they did. And really, doing against the uh, against the Giants, where they you know they had those two big tackles there in the middle that that didn't do them any good. And uh, I got to give the Eagles credit. Now, can you do that against the Niners? If they can run the ball against the Niners, they got them. They got they them. Do. Carry. I think they can throw it against them. And you see, if Dak had been accurate, he had big plays downfield. He missed the guys. You know, he either uh, – he was off with the target or he underthrew guys who had a step on him. I mean, a, because a play here or there, and uh, Dallas would have won that game. Were you shocked, Gary, that Jonathan Gannon pressed and brought blitzes on, on Daniel Jones? I mean, you know, may, maybe, maybe, this is, maybe this is something that we have to just look at him and who he is. He's a situational play-calling defensive – uh, coordinator and mm -hmm. what I mean by that is he's almost got like an offensive approach to how he calls he doesn't want high percentage turnover opportunities big plays down the field you and yep. me always know never give up the plus 25 he's mm -hmm. afraid of that play behind him yeah but man when he got into a game against an inexperienced uh quarterback he knew if they set the edges uh they weren't gonna beat him so he brought pressure that's would you agree that that game Probably he brought more pressure in that game against the Giants than any game that we've seen yeah, all year. Uh, he did. I mean, he he got after them uh, and really, you know, changed some things up, you know, and you, you saw some things you hadn't seen, uh, you know, from him. And I think it's a great situation to be in. Now, we got a young kid here now. This young kid, you know, if you can get a hit on a kid early on, you know, uh, that's been my experience because I've seen some great quarterbacks who are young who 
if you got a good hit on him, uh, especially somebody coming from a side, you know, like out of the blue, he didn't see the guy, and and you pop him, and you're getting to him, uh, and you you can unnerve him, you know. And of course, a big play, you know. And the, the Cowboys had chances. Come on, I mean, those Diggs. red zone turnovers, Gary. Come on, Jeez. Diggs. Yeah, yeah, the red Man. zone turnovers. But Diggs had the ball that was deflected. It like somebody handed him the ball. How could you let that ball go through your hands? I I don't know. And then the other play he had where. Uh, you had the tight end, you know. He's got a chance to hit him. What are you closing your eyes? What are you doing? I mean, I, I was I was disappointed in, in those plays. I mean, you know, he's supposed he's supposed to be one of their better players. Come on, you got you got to you got to give me better than that. You know, I could see him being upset after the game. I mean, look, you got a chance to make some plays, and you know that it's going to be a play here or there. So if you get the chance, at least, how do you drop a ball where they almost handed you the ball? I mean, it was coming so slow, catch this ball. You know, where you got a little kid, you know, on Christmas, you're sitting there playing with your kid, you got a little toddler, he can catch the ball. <laughs> Come on. How do you let that ball go through your hands? You know, but, you know, things happen, I understand, but they had the opportunity. But, uh, you know, they got to go into this game turnover-minded, turnover-minded. You know, a turnover here or there, and like I said, if this kid, they could cause him and they could show him some a zone, and they're blitzing him. I I would even really come with a with um, a zone blitz where I'm playing zone and I, I'm coming. I'm trying to get that kid from his blind side because you want to shake him up early. If I think if you shake him up early, you could get the kid off out hey, of his uh, out of his game. Hey Gary, do you think that Hassan Reddick is the best pass rusher the Eagles have had since Reggie White? Wow, that's a lot. That's wow. Um, mm. cuz I'll tell he's you what Gary, he's wreaking havoc, man. Yes, I mean, yes. even when he doesn't get home, uh -huh. he's like right there. I mean, he must have ran by and the only reason he didn't have four sacks in that game yeah. is because Jones got away from him. I mean, yeah. if he was a traditional pocket guy, I think he has four sacks in that game. Well, I mean, you know, they they had talked uh, you know, all week about that kid he was running against. He was shaky, you know. He had been getting beat all year. So he, he had, uh, you know, you, if you get yourself, uh, you know, a, a guy that, you, that can't handle and they can't get it done, you know, uh, you, you got to take advantage of him. And that's what he did. He he exposed that kid and he, and he got to him early. And that's why I say you get have something happen early. You can see with Jones. They got to him early. He he lost it, man. He, he's, he was shaky. You know, he was back there. It was like. Gary, he's got 19 sacks on the year. Come yeah, to the playoffs. I mean, I, I, I mean he's, he's had an amazing sacks. year. He's had an amazing year. You know, I, uh, the thing uh, with Reggie, you know, I, I've seen him, though, where, you know. Uh, oh, no, no. Got, I'm not suggesting he's be – I'm saying no, the no, best I since him. Since then. I, you know, I – you know. Hugh Douglas. I, yeah, you had Hugh. Um, Cole. Mean, you know, Trent, uh, Trent Cole, yeah. Hmm. This is his first year. I haven't seen him, you know, play up. You know, I let I like to see him, let let him see her play a couple years, cause, you know, but he's had a great year. I'll give him that. And then when you the have last that three kind years, of game, though, Gary, Gary, the yeah. last three years, seventeen this year, twelve yeah. last year, and eleven the year yeah. before. I yeah. mean, yeah, he's had a good run. I mean, and and the way he's been, and I got to got to admit, I like the fact the kid works, man. He he's a hard worker, and uh, he's tenacious. And, you know, he's giving you everything he's got. He's coming. He's, he's an effort guy. So, uh, and, and also, you know, I, I, I see him uh, like a, looking at him at practice. And then you see him utilize things in the game. He's working on his moves. And you can see him, uh, you know, just wanting to be crisp with his move. And, and he's smart. He's a smart player. So, I, I mean, I can't say enough about him. It's just, uh, you know, it's something I'd have to think about. But I, I def he's definitely among the, the best. I mean. How about this one, Gary? Not the best. Can he's among the best. Can you think of anybody that you and I played in the league with or you know that 6'1", 230? I know. I, mean, I, I, think, Suggs, I, think I looked at Terrell Suggs. He's 6'2", 250. Not yeah. the biggest guy, and they would edge rush him off the corner there a lot. you know. Yeah. And I'm like, uh -huh. I'm thinking, Gary, I can't think of a guy at that size. He's the size of a fullback. Now, now the thing is, and I'm, I'm, I'm not sure that he's that light, 230. But 
I, I will say this. The guy is he's a power rusher too. He moves people, yeah. you know. He does and, he does bull rushes. Yeah, he does bull rushes and you know, uh like with his technique of coming in there and he working on, you know, coming in there low and and and, and utilizing that against those big guys. Uh, he comes around that corner, man. I, you know, I got to give it to him. Uh, I, I didn't know he was that good. I mean, I didn't know he was going to be this productive. Uh, I, I really, even though I knew he'd had some good years, and and I remember him because I, I I knew him when he was playing at uh, at Temple. In fact, I had talked to him. I went over there. Um, we had to do something with the the kids that were coming out in the draft, and they were over there at the University of Temple. And I remember meeting him when he was um, like maybe in his sophomore or junior year. And you know, you meet so many kids, you know, you don't you you don't think what, what they're gonna eventually gonna be watching the kid is gonna be a dominant NFL player. But I've seen him develop and I see him working now. The kid works at his game, he's smart. You know, they ask him to do a lot of different things because not just rushing at times, he's dropping in the coverage and everything. So he's a smart player and uh he's giving him everything he's had. You know, you know, Gary, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a conversation that I had with Kevin Green when he was alive. Mm-hmm. And Kevin Green, when he came out of um, Auburn, he was what we used to call back in the day a tweener. He didn't. He yeah. was like between a linebacker, defensive end. You yeah. just didn't know what to do with the guy. Mm-hmm. But he was so productive and such a good player. Yeah. And you didn't know what to do. And he goes, you know, I got into a system. They created this defense for me in Los Angeles. And then he mm-hmm. had success in Pittsburgh too, obviously, and in Carolina. Yes. Uh-huh. He goes, it really takes the coordinator to find. You know, the last two teams, they could they just let him walk out the building. Yeah. They didn't even try to keep him. And so <laughs> I yeah, think you're right. give Jonathan Gannon a credit for finding the Rubik's Cube and the code to it because he has killed teams since and, they and you got know, Sue and Joseph. Yeah, yeah you, you're right. I mean, he has uh, – he definitely – I mean, he's stepped up his game. I mean, it's it just like he's gotten comfortable uh, with, with what they're doing and – I mean, he's been, he's been he's been he's been giving you what one or two sacks almost every game for what how many see I mean it's what it's been about five games, he's just been on a run. I mean, and uh, and the right, pressures and, and the yeah, quarterback and the, hits and the pressures. That's right. And, and the big thing too is, uh, you know, he's close to getting that ball out, man. You know, and because that's that's what's going to eventually that's what's going to make the difference with these guys. Is can they win that turnover battle with uh, with San Francisco? And, you know, when you get in the red zone, you know, are you scoring? Are you kicking field goals? You know, that ultimately is going to decide on who's going out to uh, Arizona. Hey, Gary, how about Lane Johnson playing 60 minutes? They rested him a little bit in the fourth, but there's no question. (laughs) Hey, Gary, when they they put him on the field, and I made a proclamation on this, man, I think this guy is the best offensive lineman that that (laughs) franchise has ever had. Yeah, and that, I mean, and that's saying a lot. At least in the last sixty years, that yeah. guy is the best. He was destroying people, and he's injured. And yeah, I can't wait to watch him in Boza this weekend. Yeah, and that, that's Gary, gonna be fun, am I man. off base when I say, yeah, he might be the best offensive lineman the organization's ever had. He may, and you know, the, the thing about the offensive line, you know, you know what, you know, if you ever get a chance to play against a guy, I mean, you know, um, you know, like they have the. Um, the rut pass rush drill, you go over there and you get a chance to go with somebody and and you feel how strong they are or whatever. Um, but sitting there looking at him, I mean, the guy's a phenomenal, he's a phenomenal athlete, you know, to be playing tackle, you know. Uh, so uh, the fact that he got so big, they moved him to tackle, but he was an athlete and he was playing tight end. And, and, and just talking to Lane, uh, you see how he is about his athleticism, see, he really wasn't an offense. He wasn't an offensive lineman. See, he was a tight end. You know, he was a, he was a quarterback, and he just got so big that we're going like, man, we got to put you on the line, man. You're just too big, and so he he's he's got the athleticism of uh, you know playing these other positions, and that's why with the strength and things and and uh, you know even you look at him, he's so lean. You don't see offensive linemen that lean. No, I mean. And it, you know, and he's got the uh, athleticism and the strength to do everything, and that's why he's just a, you know, a freak of nature. You know, you don't really have you know guys like that walking around too often to have uh, to be that athletic, and you're an offensive lineman because 
he could, he could play really any position on the opposite he, line, and probably could probably could go play tight end. Yeah, and probably even DT. I mean, the guy yeah, is really that gifted right. here. Two last yeah, questions for you. Yeah. Is the difference, in your opinion, on Sunday at the quarterback position between the two teams? Because look at the coaching I, here for an instance here. Real quick. Yeah. Kyle Shanahan's now in his third NFC championship game in four yeah. years. I mean, mm -hmm. the coaching experience plus the D coordinator on that side in San Francisco, in my opinion, I think you favored the Niners. Mm -hmm. With the experience, and I don't know how far that goes, but they've been there at least. Um, yes, is the difference the quarterback Sunday? You know, I think the difference could be uh, up front. I think the Eagles can run on them. Oh, you think they you can know, run on that Niner I, defense? I think I think they can run on them because you know, you know, because of um, of Jalen. You know, he he limits the number of guys you got out there. Now, uh, if they can run on them. You know, then that'll make a difference. But that's the whole thing. I, I mean, the Eagles' offensive line, I'm interested to see, but I think they can run them. I want to see, you know, and that's what they, why they play the game. Uh, it, it's going to be um, – it's going to come down, like I said, I think it's going to be a play here or there. Now, if, if they are able to, you know, take over a game against them, because I think they can they, – they have an advantage because of the kid – and you got to unravel this kid early, I think. You know, get him out of his game. Because if he has a few good plays early, see, that that relaxes. They got the confidence and everything. But if you could get to him early and and and, uh, and, and fool him by showing him something and, and there's something else, uh, I, I think you get in his head because that's what you want to do. You got a young kid like this. You want to get in his head. And then if you do that, then you, you got an advantage. But, but uh, you know, San Francisco is good. I mean, I – you know, I'm just talking because I, I don't know whether they're going to be able to run the ball against them because uh, this is the this is an outstanding defense. Um, but 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 we're going to find out. We are going to definitely find out. And, and that's why they play the game. And it's going to be the fun. And I think it's going to be a monumental game. Um, and, and, and who knows? We could be seeing them going at it for a while where you got, you know, similar to what you had with the uh, with the Cowboys and the Niners, where you got two franchises going at it. Uh, we could be seeing this in the NFC for a while. Last question for you. You think they're going to stroke this guy a check in the offseason for $45 million per? I think they're going to have to. You know, that's why uh, they got to get this now. Because, uh, you know, Howie, it works a miracle. Howie, if you got a miracle, pull this. <laughs> if you can, you can somehow, you know, uh, if you get in there and you talk to Jalen, now Jalen wants to win, so uh, maybe he will. He will uh, some way or another work out a discount for you, but because Jalen, I mean, he's the team guy and he wants to win and everything. But you're gonna have to do something with him. You know that it's gonna have to be something that, that you're gonna have to do. And and uh, he's got a lot of guys. Of course, a lot of these guys are on one year deals. So this is a huge game for this team. It's a huge game for them, and they got to have it. Uh, really, you know, Cincinnati's got a similar situation over there. So, oh, hey, <laughs> if you're going to pay Jalen Hurts forty five million, Mike Brown, man, hey, Mister Mister Cla Mister uh, Clamps I, or Crabs, yeah, right. Crabs right. on his on his wallet, he gonna have to open. Hey, you're going to pay Jalen forty five. You're going to pay that guy six. Man, yeah, man, hey, hey, Gary, he wow. he he's the real deal. That guy, yes, he is, he is. And and I and I expect them to, to be the team in the in the bowl. I think the Eagles. That's all. so. I think the Eagles. I expect them to be playing Cincinnati in the bowl. Absolutely, you know? Gary. I appreciate it. Thank you, my friend. All right, have a go. Got it. Should be very interested on Sunday. What happens there, man? Unbelievable, tremendous stuff. We're gonna reset everything, okay? And I'm gonna go comparisons here. Um, I want I want to bring up that offensive line again. And I want to do that again. Actually, here, that no, no, we're going to hang in here. We're going to hang in here. We're going to hang in here. Tell him we're going to hang in here. I was doing something from that Cowboy offensive line from where you guys are right now. This old line that the Eagles have, I think this is what Gary said. I think it's the key to this game on Sunday. The Cowboy and the Emmett Smith O line, Eric Williams. Eric Williams and Mark Tune versus Malata. Okay. Yeah, I'm taking it to the top. 
versus Malata and Lane. Eagles have it in the tackles. You got better. I think Eric Williams is a great player, but this group here, I think you have better tackles. Say Amalo and Dickerson, the guards for the Cowboys were Gogan and Nate. Nate's better than Say Amalo. Nate's better than Say Amalo. But Dickerson's better than Gogan. Dickerson's better. I practiced against that old line, so I know. Okay? I practiced against the Cowboy old line. So I know what I'm talking about here. I didn't play against this, obviously, this 2022 Eagle team, but I played against that Cowboy line. And Kevin was good, but I never thought he was dominant. He's a big dude, man. He's a 6'6", 365-pound guy. Um, so the guards, Nate's better than Isaac Sayamalo. There, I don't, I don't think there's any question to that. Um, but Dickerson's better than Gogan. And at center position, they had Stepnowski and Ray Donaldson. And I think Jason, I think Jason Kelsey's better than both those. And I happen to think Ray Donaldson is a hall of fame player. Um, so at the end of the day, the Eagles have a better O line than the Cowboys championship championship run O line that won three titles in four years. Yeah, I'm comfortable saying that. Um, and I think I think Goddard Goddard's better than Novacek. Goddard's better than Novacek. A.J. Brown and, and um, Michael Irvin are the same. And I think Devontae's better than Alvin Harper. I heard that Jeremiah died, man. Dude, God bless. He loved coming on and giving us a whole bunch of BS, man. Rest in peace, brother. I'm very disappointed to hear that. I heard that. Man, and you guys are like family over here, man. All good. There's no center ever with better technique than Kelsey. Kevin Mawai was pretty good, but not him. Okay? Not him. Um, yeah, M. Reyes, man. Hey, I'm sorry. I I not I I thought you were talking about I, I get it now. Man. Crazy. Yeah. Hard to believe we're, that old line is was so good, man. That was that old line was so good Saturday. Watching them play is a privilege. Man, blowing dude, they blew Williams and Dexter Lawrence off the line of scrimmage. They were fantastic. Yeah, man, I cannot believe Jeremiah, man. That's terrible. Does anyone know when he passed? Man, I'm sad to see I'm sad to hear that. But give him homage, man. He's got to be looking down on it going like this now. All good, right? Ertz was really good. Yeah, but not not Goddard good. I, I think Ertz had better hands than Goddard. Because Goddard will put the ball on the ground, you know? Goddard will put the ball on the ground. Dude, he was 39. Man, that's sad. I'm sorry to hear that, man. Dude, wasn't he in here like last week? I thought he was in here last week. Yeah, wasn't he in here last week? I thought he was in here talking to us last week, if I'm not mistaken. I could have swore he was in here. Is Hertz better than Aikman? Tw 
Troy managed everything. Jalen's part of everything. Like when I watch Troy, I don't know. When I watch Jalen, I see a better player than Troy. Troy had weapons too. Now, it, it's kind of tough to sit here and talk about a three-time Super Bowl champion. Okay, I mean, the guy won three Super Bowls. Got to pump the brakes on comparing a guy who hasn't won but won one playoff game, which is huge. It changed. It's changed. Hey, I'll tell you what. This guy's won more playoff games than Aaron Rodgers has in the last couple of years. <laughs> I'm talking Jalen. Right? But if I had to have a quarterback, again, it's just the style thing aside. I'm not going to sit here and go over that again. You just got to be careful because one guy's got three rings. Okay? Three rings. KC goes, are you an Eagles believer now? KC must be new to the show. KC, I've been picking you to go to the Super Bowl since March. I can't understand how people continually still say that. Oh, by the way, okay? By the way, I brought a topic up here with, with Gary Cobb. And I wanted to get your guys. Aikman's probably, I don't know, man. I think they think themselves around the field the same way. Troy was a very smart ball player. And I think, and I think, and I, and I think Jalen is too. They're very smart football players. Is Hassan Reddick the best pass rusher that you've had since Reggie? Um, is he better than Hugh Douglas? You think Hassan Reddick is better th- as a pass rusher than Hugh? How about Trent Cole? He's got 19 sacks. What's he got? 19 sacks in 18 games? Jesus, criminy. Clyde Simmons? Eagle goes, Sill said that we would start two and three. Yeah, and I said you'd make it to the Super Bowl. Actually, I thought it was more like two and five. Um, Hugh Douglas was a great pass rusher, though. Let's reset. Let's, let, let, let's finish this topic up. Please hit the like button. I want to go over the divisional games, and I want to go over it statistically. I want to do that. Conference times and games are all set. The NFL has ranked tier one and tier two quarterbacks. I wonder if you agree where your boy is now. Hour number three. 